Welcome to DABCC Radio, where smart people listen. Virtualization and Cloud Talk, featuring cutting edge solutions from the hottest companies around the globe. Broadcasting from the DABCC offices in sunny Sarasota, Florida. Surrounded by computers, books, and Legos. A Microsoft MVP, Citrix Charter CTP, VMware V Expert. And your host, Douglas Brown. Hello, everyone. This is Doug Brown, and I have a great show for you guys today. We have Citrix on the show, and we're going to talk about SD-WAN. This stuff is hot. And we have, well, I'm really, really excited because we have Donna Johnson on, and Donna's one of the technical marketing guys, and she is technical as can be, and she does an amazing job explaining to us, first of all, what is SD-WAN, in case you don't know, and then if you do know, start peeling the layers off the onion and talking about you know, more specifically what it is, why you should use it, what's new with the solutions. They have a couple releases, uh, uh, latest press releases out, what are all these about, um, you know, all this. When you're done, you'll walk away saying, I need some sd wan and uh that's what we wanted so on that note with no further ado i'm really excited to dive into this interview with donna johnson from citrix okay donna thank you so much for taking the time to be with us i look forward to this i i uh i'm not a networking guy per se i'm a citrix guy i'm an app guy but i'm really interested in everything that's going on within citrix within the networking and obviously how it benefits and app and zen desktop and you know the other citrix products within the suite right so this is really cool thank you so much for taking the time well thank you doug and thanks for inviting me i, I look forward to this conversation absolutely so that being said as always my first question is who are you so can you tell us who are you and what do you do over at citrix okay well i'm donna johnson um i'm currently director of product marketing for the Netscaler SD-WAN product, which is the newest member of the Netscaler portfolio. Um, Prior to being at Citrix, I was actually at a startup in the SD-WAN space, one of the pioneers within that space, and worked there for about five years. So um, I I was in SD-WAN before SD-WAN was cool. In fact, before it even had a name, and we originally called it WAN virtualization, and we sort of floundered around for a couple years trying to figure out what to call it. And then um, the industry coalesced around the name SD-WAN, and it's been really exciting because the market has coalesced around that and is is really starting to take off. So now that I'm at Citrix, I'm really looking forward to um, helping the portfolio grow within Citrix. And my goal is when I talk to people like you, you don't say, I'm interested in knowing how networking benefits uh, ZenApp and Zen Desktop. You're going to say, I want to know how ZenApp and Zen Desktop can benefit networking. Ooh, ooh, well, I know that, though. Zen App and Zen, Zen Desktop benefit everything. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking right, to us. Zen- like throwing down the gauntlet. So yeah, gonna... you're talking to a WinFrame baby, you know? I mean, come on, remoting's the greatest thing my eyes have ever seen, right? <laughs> so it's the All best right, well, way. Then we can end this conversation by just saying we will make it better. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. It does make it better. And that's, 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 yeah, they all fit together, right? Depending on which side of the coin you're on is which side you like to see, but it all fits together. And without a piece, you know, we're missing something. So first and foremost, SD-WAN, what does SD-WAN mean? Before we get into the Citrix piece, what is, what is this space? Can you maybe, you know, lay the ground of what this space is? Uh, sure. And, you know, I'm sure that you assume that, that that's an easy question. The question. Um, it's not an easy question. That's why I throw it at the expert. <laughs> well, and, and I joke because, um, honestly, SD-WAN is not a single thing and its definition is not currently fixed. Yeah. Um, I mentioned that I started in this space before it was called SD-WAN. And in the uh, six or so years that I've been working in this space, we've really seen the definition of it evolve and change and and grow um, almost to the point now where it's potentially too large to encompass all the functionality that we're assigning to it. Um, And we may have to create offshoots of SD-WAN and subcategories here pretty soon. But I can tell you that it started really with a focus on 
allowing companies to use hybrid networks, primarily broadband networks combined with MPLS, in order to create enterprise quality WAN connections, connections between their branch offices and the data center or branch offices and each other. And um, they were, there was a huge need for this a few years ago as the amount of bandwidth that apps used got larger and larger. And the MPLS network just couldn't grow fast enough um, or really scale to enough bandwidth to be able to support these new apps. So companies were looking for a way to get more bandwidth, hopefully for less money, and that kind of gave rise to the growth of the hybrid network. And um, and that's really the original problem to some extent that SD-WAN was, was created to, to deal with. Um, since that time, as I mentioned, I think it's, it's really grown and evolved. So we've moved from straight up just hybrid networks to a lot of all broadband networks. We've moved from the connections primarily between, being between offices in a company to, um, to being a balance of those connections with office to cloud connections. Um, and then that's certainly an area where we expect to see quite a bit of growth. We've seen the use case evolve just from straight additional bandwidth via hybrid networks to um, to being able to create much more reliable networks, even than an MPLS on its own. So the ability to do best pass selection, um, immediate failover in the case of uh, Netscaler SD-WAN, the product I represent, being able to do lossless failover with, with no impact on applications, even if a single link dies. Uh, we've moved into being able to ensure that we meet application SLAs by being able to understand the application and adapt how we treat that application across the network to ensure that it reaches its maximum quality. Um, and then most recently, we've evolved to really SD-WAN, to some extent, encompassing all of the branch network. Um, and what I mean by that, it is it has gradually come to subsume WAN optimization. That's now considered to be part and parcel of SD-WAN. Um, it is rapidly expanding to include what we call an integrated WAN edge solution, which includes uh, routing, um, firewall capability, WAN optimization. Um, we've seen companies move into providing wireless access points, um, LTE modems, and even in one case, LAN switching. So um, like I said, SD-WAN has, has grown to a point where it's become almost indistinguishable from networking. Yeah. Um, but I will add one thing that, that I think does, has from the beginning and continues to distinguish it from old school networking, even as it may become the entire branch network, it is typified by a centralized and easy to use configuration and policy definition system so that the old school way of, of provisioning and configuring your network services by logging in and typing in obscure commands invented by some company somewhere um, is largely gone by the wayside. And now users are expecting um, to be able to in one place to find the policies that are in force across the entire network and have those automatically pushed out to everything within the network. Um, so to, to bring it back full circle, and I know I, I'm running on on this topic. No, this is great. This is great. I love um, is that SD-WAN, the commonality has been this single point of configuration and policy, even while the functionality of it has tended to expand over time. That's very interesting, very interesting. You know, a lot of us are listening here, and, and I won't say, well, I will say a lot of us, we're old Metaframe guys, right? We're old Citrix guys, and some of the networking stuff, we obviously understand, we have to understand it. But when we get a, you know, a great explanation like that, we love it, right? You know, that is just, that is really great, Don. I love it. So I have one really stupid question. What does SD stand for? So it's, I should have answered that in my long 20 minutes little <laughs> way there. Um, it stands for software defined That's what I and figured. the name is derived from software defined networking and SD-WAN does um, share a lot of the architectural goals of SDN um, but applied in a different way and, of course, applied towards the WAN rather than the data center. Yeah, that's what I figured, but I wanted to ask nonetheless. 
So that being said, uh, you know, you're you're the guru at Citrix about SD WAN. So can you bring us up to you know? Can you provide an overview of the Netscaler SD WAN um, solution for the for our audience and bring us on the same page there? Sure. And, you know, I have to caveat that, but in case anyone in my team is listening, I am not the guru. <laughs> You're one of the but, gurus. Let's say that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be content with being one of them. Okay. There's um, many, many gurus. And <laughs> we have many gurus. Um, so I, so Netscaler SD-WAN um, has a few things that really makes it stand out and, um, and I, since, as you mentioned, you, you may be old Winframe guys or, um, or certainly those well-versed in Citrix technology, um, I mean, one of the things that we do that's different is um, a tighter integration with ZenApp and Zen Desktop or specifically the, the HDX protocol than other SD-WAN companies. Um, they, they view Citrix as one of a group of applications whereas we consider it to be the most important application. And so we've done some special things in the product to understand the protocol at a deeper level and provide additional value. So no question that's one of the things that, that has made us um, stand out. And I think, you know, one of the things that if, if you and I are doing this conversation six months or 12 months from now, something that we'll be talking more about, um, deepening that integration and also um, expanding the integration points to other products within the Citrix family, including the other products in the Netscaler line. Um, so first and foremost, Netscaler SD-WAN has a good integration with Zen App and Zen Desktop. Other things that I think are um, particularly special about it, especially with respect to the competition, um, is our ability to to detect problems in the network very quickly and adapt very quickly. So as I mentioned in my the opening, you know, almost all SD-WAN products have the ability to fail over if something in the network fails. But we are able to detect a failure in the network or, or even just a, a, um, a quality issue in the network generally within just three to four packets, um, which, you know, if you're if your latency is 50 milliseconds, that means that we might be able to detect a problem in the network within 200 milliseconds. And um, in doing that, um, we can adapt to that in most cases before the application actually is impacted. And we can actually retransmit any packets that were lost during that failure issue. Um, so the applications on, on the receiving end don't notice that there was any problem in the network. And this, thus don't start to close down their, their TCP window. And so you don't end up with that problem that you generally tend to up, up with, with sort of gradually ratcheting down performance um, and then ha- taking time for it to build back up again. So um, it keeps the applications themselves running well, even if you outright lose a link. Um, so our ability to do that quickly and to do it without any impact on application performance is really, I think, one of our strongest claims to fame. And has made us very successful if the applications running across the network are real time. So, for example, voice calls, uh, video communications, Skype communications like like you and I are on right now. Um, And it it also plays well into our support for HDX because the last thing anyone wants on a virtual application is for the network connection to reset for you to lose the session or have it disconnect in any way. So. Um, I think that's really one of the things that's differentiated us and it's made us particularly good with Zen App and Zen Desktop customers. Well, perfect. And I just wrote down the question as, as you were speaking. You, know, you mentioned you, you, the, what Citrix is doing is really, um, you know, SD WAN like everyone else is doing, but also really heavily, you know, benefiting the core products Zen Desktop Zen, Zen App. And then you mentioned a few things. Anything else that's specific to Zen App and Zen Desktop do you want to, you know, point out? Well, I think there's there's a couple things that are that are particularly good. I mean, I mentioned the HDX protocol. Sure. Um, one which of the is things huge. that we, which is which is huge, and one of the things that we can do is we can actually split it, the session into four different streams of traffic, um, and then direct each of those streams of traffic differently. So remember, I said that one of our goals is to allow each SLA to meet its or each application to meet its SLA. Yep. Um, so in a case of say HDX, we would split out the 
thin wire traffic, which is mainly responsible for your keystrokes being transmitted, your mouse moves, and your screen refreshes. We separate that from um, print queues, for example, which is the big bulk data downloads when you choose to do a print in your office. Uh, because if you think about it, who cares if the print job has a slightly slower connection or loses a couple packets here and there that can get reset later? Um, you know, it, it's just not going to impact it. Yep. Whereas if your keystrokes are delayed or choppy or your mouse move doesn't track aesthetically the way your eye expects it to, it becomes very disconcerting on a virtual app session. And so by being able to take what's most important to the user interface, user experience, separate it out and send it on the best channel possible, um, we can ensure the highest possible quality for that um, for that session, that, that application, um, and thus make the most efficient use of the bandwidth that you have available. So under the theory that most companies over a WAN does, don't have an infinite amount of excellent bandwidth, we take advantage of the most excellent bandwidth you have for the most important part of the application experience. Um, so that's, that I think is, is really, that, that accounts for about half of the, the strong value that we bring to HDX um, or Zen Up and Zen Desktop. The other thing is visibility. So I am not an expert on, um, on the Zen products, but I, I know that they have a great deal of visibility, but they are to some extent blind to what actually goes on in the network. So they can tell you what the latency is, but they can't tell you where the latency occurred. And so when you add SD-WAN into the network, we have visibility of every application flow across the network. Uh, and we can, we can say, you know, which users having trouble on which application at what time, um, but we can say where within the network that problem might have occurred. So it gives the users a much more complete idea of where the problems exist in their overall application delivery flow, which helps them diagnose and, and correct the problem. Oh, that's very interesting. So it, it comes with, you know, pretty detailed reporting then. Exactly. Yes. Much right. more than you get with, you know, either product on its own. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That, that's very cool. That's very cool. So w w that being said, you know, you guys work with both, uh, you know, enterprises and MSPs and things like that. Let, let's take the enterprise real quick. You know, uh, in, you in many ways answered this over and over already. But, uh, you know, are there any benefits for the uh, – what makes it compelling for the enterprise and what pain points are you trying to solve within the enterprise with, with a solution like SD-WAN? Um, sure. So the main one is – well, I, there's so many. Yeah. Um, let me uh, see if I can prioritize these. Um, certainly the one that, that tends to be the most obvious problem that people want to solve with the problem – with the product is – that of an unreliable network. So if you think of how business is changing today, um, the, the companies are expanding. Even if they're not expanding in the number of people, they're expanding in the number of places that people do work from. And because of that, they have more offices, um, often in multiple countries, and the network itself has been spread further and further. And furthermore, their data and applications have been spread through the use of cloud and SaaS applications and websites. So the entire network itself has sort of exploded in, in scope. Um, and if you have an unreliable network or a poor performing network, that whole system comes crashing down. And in the case, of course, if you're running virtualized applications, your offices may not even be able to get work done. So if they have a poor performing network, um, the chief value that we bring to them is a very reliable network so that they can move forward with virtualized applications or with cloud or with using Skype for business as a business communication tool, knowing that they have a reliable network and that they can depend on it. So that's sometimes that's the most obvious because, you know, people tend to react to crises and a network going down and taking the applications down with it is a crisis. Um, but the other thing that we do is that we give companies a network that has an abundant amount of bandwidth and reliability and quality control over that network, 
which gives them the ability to deploy new applications. Um, so if the president comes in and says, you know, I want to institute video conferencing, I'm cutting down on travel, I just want everything to be done in a video conference, uh, the, um, the network now is in place and able to support that because they can add broadband very quickly, because they know that we'll ensure the video quality remains high over any connection. It enables them to say, yes, there's my Citrix um, mo slogan, slogan, but um, it enables them to say yes to the initiatives that their business is requesting, um, whether it's you know, new applications, um, whether it's new offices. And so that agility is really important, particularly as, um, businesses look in the long term to grow and to change and to adapt to, to where technology is going. And from the MSP side, I imagine, uh, you know, it's almost the same story, except for instead of businesses, it's customers, right? Or other yeah, benefits. It, it, exactly. So um, I, I use an analogy that, you know, customers moving to the cloud are doing it for a variety of reasons. But one of the things that's conditioned them to believe is that technology should be easy. And, you know, if they're going to be able to just spin up a new app in Azure or create a new account on SaaS with nothing but their credit card, they're not they don't want the network to be difficult. So they become conditioned to believe that IT should be easier. And that's manifested itself in a couple things. One is an increasing reliance on MSPs or service providers to deliver the network. They want the network to be you know, just there when they need it. They don't necessarily want to invest a great amount of time in learning networking technology. And so um, we've seen this internationally, but also moving to North America, this need for um, th this desire to turn to things like MSP. So the value we bring to an MSP is the ability to provide this service to their customers um, and to combine it with a lot of other services that they might offer. So if you take, you know, a service provider, an MSP that's offering cloud hosting, maybe it's one of our CSPs at Citrix and they're actually offering Zen App and Zen Desktop as a service to their customers. Um, or maybe they're offering um, different types of security services. SD-WAN makes a logical extension to that so that they can offer, for example, virtualized application hosting and then they can add SD-WAN onto that, which gives their customers reliable, direct from the branch connections to those virtual servers. Um, so we really expand the portfolio that MSPs can offer to their customers. And traditional service providers who are seeing a decrease in MPLS revenues um, find this to be a very attractive offering that they can make because it allows them to uh, continue to create a, a deep relationship with their customers and having control over that network gives them the ability to deliver additional products to their customers. So um, there's, there's a lot of value in it for the service providers as well as for the end customers using the service. Perfect. And, and what does this solution look like? Is it a hardware, software? Do you have hardware, software? You know, what, what, what is the product itself? Um, well, it's it's software. Citrix is a software company, um, and so the the real value in the product is software. We do sometimes, well, right now we mostly, um, but optionally deliver it on a hardware platform, and we share hardware products with um, the other Netscaler products. So um, very similar hardware to what ADC and Gateway are delivered on. But um, you can purchase it as a VPX, as a virtual product, software only. And um, and you could run it inside of other, both servers and also inside of, for example, um, other routers or white box switches. And then we also have a cloud form factor, which you can run in um, AWS or in Azure to create a SD-WAN connection into the cloud. So a lot of options depending on what an individual enterprise wants. And then we scale it based on the amount of bandwidth. So um, you can go very small if you have a small office, or you can go up to multi gigs if you have a large office with a lot of bandwidth. Makes sense. Makes sense. So <clears throat> when do I use SD WAN, and why is SD WAN required versus what you know a customer is already using? And I guess in many ways you've answered that too. It's quality of insurance, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when you use it, if, if you have it in, you just use it all the time. It's just part of your infrastructure. You 
you don't notice it except that everything just gets a little bit better. Um, that's, you know, that's, that's really the, the most common thing we hear from our users is it's better. I don't have problems. Um, you're not necessarily going to be see a dramatic change, but in general, your IT staff will get less complaints and users will be happier with their application performance. Um, so, yeah, once it's in, it, it's always in. Now, you may choose to grow it as an enterprise. They may grow it slowly. They may put it in a few offices first and then grow over time. They may add it to the cloud selectively. So over time, more and more applications will go through the, the SD-WAN um, solution. Um, now, as I mentioned in the beginning, it's also growing beyond just the uh, connectivity and into more of an overall networking solution. So more and more of our customers are turning to it to be um, the, the edge router or an on-prem firewall. And so then you would use it for different types of services, even traditional routing that doesn't involve um, an SD-WAN appliance in, in any other location. If you're just using it for Internet traffic, you can still use it as the edge router. So gradually you can replace other routing solutions that you might have on-prem and, and even firewalls, um, depending on what you're doing with your Internet traffic. So um, you use it all the time and you use it for increasing use cases. So, so basically, everyone should use it at all times. There's <laughs> that, no excuse. I mean, yeah, There's that, no that, excuse really for not right using SD-WAN. Everyone should use it for everything all the time because it will make your life better. How's, how's that a marketing <laughs> that, that is what I wanted to hear. Use it all the time. It makes your life better. Why aren't you using it? Come on, get with the program. We love SD-WAN. Hashtag. <laughs> I, I have a my job is done. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, anytime someone says speed up, you know, uh, HDX, uh, um, I'm a happy man speeding up thin wire. I'm a happy man, right? Making that, you know, th that seamless, uh, smooth, I'm a happy man. So, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, recently Citrix came out with two major announcements uh, relating to, uh, you know, SD-WAN. Uh, can you talk about those? You guys had an announcement at Azure and you know, what does this mean for the customer? What are the advantages? Well, what is this announcement, uh, these announcements? Sure. In fact, I think the two announcements you're talking about, one was our Azure support and the other was our partnership with Equinix. And I, I talk about them both at the same time because they both kind of have the same goal, which is to improve and ease our customers transition into the cloud um, or in the case of working with Equinix into a, a hybrid or a multi-cloud environment. So um, as you can imagine, as, as companies put more of their applications in something like Azure or a, a public cloud, or as they move to more SaaS applications, more and more of their traffic, network traffic, is not going back to applications in the data center. It's going to um, the cloud and the Internet. And so one of the things that 50 percent of companies do today is they take most of their internet traffic or sometimes all of their internet traffic and they actually hairpin it from a branch office back through the data center um, and then out into the internet from there. And they generally do that for security purposes because they want to make sure that, you know, there's a strong firewall in place and a lot of data protection measures. And, and that makes perfect sense, but you do get an additional latency penalty by having to take that additional step through the data center. And that penalty becomes more difficult as more of your applications are hosted in the cloud. For example, if you're running ZenApp and Zen Desktop in the cloud, where latency does matter, the last thing you want to do is have to send every packet from you know, your office in Wichita, Kansas, through your headquarters in New York, and then out to the internet. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, so the, the major value of both of these announcements is a way that our customers can connect directly from their branch to the cloud, whether it's Azure or other cloud providers. They don't have that latency that's incurred from the hairpinning, um, and um, it's, it ends up being a much easier network to administer. Um, but in order to do that, you have to have a couple things. One is you do have to have a, um, a, you know, a trusted location in the cloud that you can connect to, and that's the SD-WAN instance in the cloud. And we do support Azure, and we have, we have supported AWS for a while. Um, so the traffic going to Azure or AWS is trusted and goes on an SD-WAN tunnel from the branch office directly to that cloud instance. Um, so it's a more efficient connection. And it also overcomes 
any problems that you might have with that last mile of connectivity, which is generally when your problems are going to occur. Um, generally, the backbone of the Internet is, is pretty darn reliable, but that last mile connection to your individual office um, might not be as reliable. So this gives you the ability to connect directly from your branch to the cloud and overcome quality or um, um, outages that might occur on that last mile connection. Now, the Equinix relationship is is a, a kind of a step beyond that, which is if you as a company are going to a hybrid cloud. So maybe you've got some applications and data hosted in Equinix. Maybe you've got your federated identity in Equinix through the NetScaler Gateway product. Um, but then you have your applications hosted in Azure, um, as well as maybe AWS, as well as another cloud provider. And, and more of our companies are going to a hybrid cloud approach, either as a transition to a single cloud or as a, a failure scenario. So they, they don't want to rely only on a single cloud. So by placing an SD-WAN, NetScaler SD-WAN instance in Equinix, we can take advantage of their cloud exchange um, or cloud hub capability, which uh, has very low latency, sometimes cable connected um, connections into private and public clouds. So we can build again that that very reliable, high quality network connection to Equinix, and then from there they can use Azure um, Express Route or AWS Direct Connect um, to get into the cloud. So. Basically, both announcements give you a SD-WAN connection to the edge of the cloud, either Azure or Equinix, and give you a much stronger and more reliable connection direct from your offices. Again, it's about those smooth applications, isn't it? It's all about the app. I love it. I love it. It is all about the app. It is. It's totally all about the app. In fact, I was just doing a session up in Seattle just a couple days ago, and we're talking about the next big thing, and everyone said the cloud was the next big thing, but the cloud's not was never the next big thing because the cloud is itself is just nothing. It needs applications. The app was the next big thing that sat on top of the cloud, right? So, that's, that's a that's a great way of putting it. You're right. The cloud is not a destination in and of itself. Oh. It's an enabler. Yes. Um, and and what we're doing is enabling the cloud to be an enabler for your applications. Yeah. Um, it's not very pithy, but in some ways, that's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, that's very cool. Now we need to find what's the killer app or what's the app that sits on IoT that changes everything, right? <laughs> so that's no, that's a good question. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be my refrigerator. Um, no, 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 no. But it's it has its piece, though. You know, it has its play in it. The Internet of everything, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I think I mentioned to you, I'm at Mobile World Congress this week, and so I'm, I'm getting an earful on um, IoT and oh. how it's going to change our world. Yeah. It's well, the next big thing. It is the next big thing. Uh, <laughs> it definitely is. It's, 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 uh, it still weighs away, though, in, in some ways. And IoT is everything, right? You know, from business operations to... Uh, um, you know, operational efficiency to, you know, my refrigerator and my toaster. Right? <laughs> but, you know, you, you actually hit on a good thing, um, which is it is a, it is an, another example of how the the way we work is changing and how the branch office is changing. Yep. So, you know, I mentioned in the beginning that branch offices are now, you know, becoming more far flung as people are choosing to work other places Um but if you think about it, IoT is making a branch office with quotes around it anywhere that an internet internet connected machine is that's part of your enterprise network. Yep. So it could be an electric substation that's sending back reports about the electric grid to yep. um, to an electric provider. That substation now becomes a, a branch office in effect, and all of the things that you need to ensure reliability and quality exist for that connection as well. So um, I'm bringing the whole world together to say, you know, that SD-WAN is an enabler, not just for the cloud, but for the whole Internet of Things. So as you can see, this is a very high growth product. For yeah, us. absolutely. Absolutely. An application doesn't have to mean, you know, Outlook, right? An application could be, you know, a sensor data back into the corporate. An app is, right. yeah, it doesn't, you know, we don't have to think a traditional Windows based application. It's a workload. Right. So, yeah, right. absolutely. I totally understand. And you did just mention you are at a Mobile World Conference. And, 
I think Citrix has what you said, 40 some people there. So, you know, <laughs> how does the obviously Citrix is big in mobile space with, uh, um, you know, Zen Mobile and things like that. But SD WAN at Mobile World Conference, can you explain this? How does this fit in this space? Well, you know, I'm, I'm actually here talking about all of the NetScaler products. And they really go to what I was t- telling you about our, our value prop for service providers. So, um, service providers themselves, as the world changes, are looking for new products they can offer to their customers. And so, NetScaler uh, across the board, including the ADC Gateway and, and Access Firewall, as well as SD WAN, are all products that can be offered as hosted um, network services that, that these providers can give to their customers. Um, so, for example, you may choose to use Gateway as a service for your federated identity. Um, you may use it for um, SSL VPN termination. So a service provider can provide that to its customers. And um, similarly, you could do SD-WAN as a service. So um, it, while it's called Mobile World Congress, there really is service providers of, of all types here um, looking for these new products. And the NetScaler um, portfolio really gives them a whole suite of products that they can offer to their customers. And, of course, it complements, well, the Zen Up and Zen Desktop that they can offer as a service. You bet, you bet. And anytime I hear mobile, I think of slow links too. Although that's not necessarily the the case. <laughs> it's not. Anymore. Well, I'm I'm sure there's people here at this conference that would tell you that that is absolutely not true. Yeah. Um, the next big thing after uh, after all the other ones is is five G connections and <sighs> um, and mobile everywhere. Yeah, I can't wait. But I have this thing. I, I'm 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 just what's the word for it? I'm I'm doomed or I'm um cursed there's the word every time i live somewhere or for years every t- every place i lived as soon as i moved away they brought in fiber and then i would live <laughs> another place as soon as i moved away they brought in fiber and i was like i'm never going to get fiber give me fiber right no but i need you to move to my neighborhood and, and then leave yeah <laughs> you don't have fiber yet and then i have my <laughs> friends that are on the google fiber and those people just oh. suck <laughs> you know yeah. they just serious suck. jealousy serious jealousy so uh, and I actually spend a lot of my time in Berlin, Germany, and talk about slow internet. The second largest city in the world has the worst internet I've ever experienced in my life. So um, my old CDPD CDMA wireless cards were better. Not really. Well, then I'm going to go talk to the enterprises there because I can tell that they will need SD WAN. You need to, yeah. You need to to, to the telcos need it for. Uh, <laughs> but so that being said, uh, um, competition. Um, you know, you've answered this question many times, but the last two questions I usually ask are competition and future questions. You can reiterate, you can give us more things, but, you know, why should I care about what Citrix is doing versus the other guys in the SD-WAN space? Um, that, that's a great question. And, you know, we certainly talked about our integration with the other Citrix products as, as being a big differentiator for us within the market. Um, but, you know, if you're not a Citrix customer, I think what you'll what you'd really like about um, Netscaler SD WAN is the way that we've brought together a lot of different network services into a single appliance, physical or virtual, that you can run on your WAN edge, um, that you can configure through a single, very easy to use GUI, um, and it, it basically makes it simple to turn up a network, simple to manage the network, simple to get your office to connect to the cloud without sacrificing application reliability or quality. And um, I think, you know, we have, we have a very strong portfolio of network services, including WAN optimization, routing, uh, firewall, and, and the SD-WAN capability. And, um, you know, we're going to continue to expand that. Um, and it really makes it very easy to, to turn up a new office or, to change the networking in an existing office to a, a lower cost, simpler model. So we see all kinds of businesses taking advantage of that. And um, very few of our competitors, if any, have such a complete portfolio that is centrally configured through an, an easy GUI interface. So that's really one of our strongest differentiators. Um, and I think that combined with our support for real-time applications and, and lossless failover and our integration with Zen Up and Zen Desktop really give us a strong one, two, three punch um, for enterprises who are you know, looking for reliable, high quality um, application access and simpler connections to the cloud. 
Perfect. Well said. And in the future, what can we expect from, you know, where you guys go into this product? What What's next? Talking about the next big thing. What's the next big thing for <laughs> SD-WAN? I'm not sure I can compete with cloud and IoT as next big things. Um, you know, you're going to see you're going to see quite a few things. One is um, we're going to continue to grow our integration with the rest of the Citrix products. Uh, we're going to deepen our integration with Zen Up and Zen Desktop, obviously. And we're also looking for opportunities to integrate with the rest of the Netscaler products. I mean, if you think about it, um, Gateway in particular is increasingly being used by enterprises to to provide uh, um, access. So that's where you have your identity. Um, or that's where you you know access your identity and, and then use that as a single sign onto all your applications. Um, so that means that Netscaler Gateway understands who the users are and understands the applications that it's connecting those users to. Um, and that's a, a really powerful piece of knowledge to have. And so the more that we can integrate with that and provide an end-to-end seamless application delivery infrastructure for our customers. I think that's going to provide a, a very strong value to them, and um, it'll it'll simplify not just their branch network, but really their entire application delivery infrastructure. Um, and I think that's what customers are looking for. I, uh, you know, I've, I've been in this business technology for a long time, and customers are tired of integrating piece parts from different vendors. They want a comprehensive solution that works together out of the box. And so our next big thing is to make sure that they get that across the entire Citrix portfolio. Um, so that's definitely one area of growth. And the second one I, I would mention is um, growth into web services and providing additional services uh, via the cloud or cloud services, I should have said, additional services via the cloud um, and, and cloud delivered networking, again, with a goal towards increasing the simplicity of the network. Um, so that customers can focus on their business and and not on the network itself. Makes sense. Makes sense. And you mentioned integration, and um, in as we were chatting before the the podcast, you t- you you started to to share with me some of this amazing stuff with it going on with inside Citrix and the transformation of Citrix itself. Maybe can you share some of that and and how you guys are better integrating the products and things like that? I think that would be a um, huge value to our audience. They love this stuff. Sure. Yeah, sure. So we, you know, we went through a change. Um, I think we actually announced it at or around Summit um, in January, and we've restructured the company to align um, our our to align not on business units, which is what we were prior to, to this time, but um, to align along um, functional groups. So our, our engineering team is is working together under a single management structure. Our product teams and our uh, marketing teams. And the goal of that is better alignment across the organization. Um, and I think that's going to lead to increased integration in the product. It's going to lead to increased integration in the marketing message. Um, and and really a, a real increased focus on Citrix is broad strategic goals, which are helping our customers move to the cloud, um, helping them deploy Internet of Things and helping them create a more secure enterprise to basically deal with the, the changing nature of work um, and and the changing nature of how applications are delivered and consumed. So um, we see those as the big strategic problems that we need to solve or opportunities that our customers are trying to take advantage of. And so we want to make sure that our products are all working in concert to deliver that to our customers. That's great, Donna. That's That right there is is just phenomenal. What, did I cut you off anything else? No, no, I think that was that was it. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this, this podcast. You, you are awesome. We'll have to bring you back on uh, when you, you know, when, when there's, you know, when you have the next big thing, right? The, the updates and things like that. So, uh, well, and thank you for inviting me. I, I often don't get people that just want to sit and listen to me for half an hour. So, oh, uh, listen to you for hours. How's that? We can, you can come on here and just talk for hours if you want, anytime <laughs> you want, you know, you have a captive audience. Let's put it that way. So. People stuck in traffic. Right. Yeah, well, hopefully they're not. Hopefully they're not stuck. Hopefully they're moving fast <laughs> through their long commutes. And some of these guys are working out. They're healthy people too, right? Okay. Right now, some guys running on a treadmill, going, "Oh, it's just five more minutes. Five more minutes." <laughs> so. All right. Well, let's let that guy get off his treadmill and and people get out of their cars. 
You got um, it. Donna, thank you so much. I'll go ahead and give you the last word in case we forgot anything or anything you you want to say or just summarize it. Um, but I'll, I'll say thank you very much. I really enjoyed it, and I definitely appreciate your time. You know, you're out in Barcelona. You had to, you know, skip away into a, you know, a, a dark room to talk with me. So I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. And again, I appreciate being invited. And, you know, we talked a lot about the next big thing. So I'll leave you with this thought. SD-WAN is the next big thing um, that is not way out in time. It's it's now. And um, if you're currently working for an enterprise and you haven't looked at SD-WAN, if you're currently a Zen Apps and Desktop customer and you haven't looked at SD-WAN, I would encourage you to do that. Um, it makes all things better. Ah, I love it. I love it. And so it's not it's not the next big. It is the big thing. <laughs> it is the big thing. Thank it you. It is the big thing. I love it. And and it makes things smooth as silk. It gives us <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Donna, thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you and you have a great morning and I'm going to go have a great evening. Why right, thank you. Okay, that concludes another successful episode of DABCC Radio. Thank you so much, Donna. I really enjoyed this. She, uh, she's just amazing, right? I hope you guys uh, learned a bit about good old SD-WAN and, uh, of course, what, what this means to you, why you should just run out and have this thing if you don't already do. And if you do have it, get more of it, right? But uh, anything that makes, you know, for me personally, anything that makes uh, Zen App and Zen Desktop faster, better, um, uh, experience, then I'm all for it, right? I mean, there's no questions asked there, but it's not just a solution for Zen App and Zen Desktop, as Donna would be quick to say. It's it's really for the entire enterprise, the entire you know uh, um, managed service provider. So definitely check out what these guys are doing. It is the big thing right now, as Donna said, and it's really great stuff. So on that note, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for listening to DABCC.com. Head over to www.dabcc.com for the latest and greatest cloud virtualization, SD-WAN, mobility, news and support resources, you name it, it's up there. We're updated every single day. It's just a great place to go to stay up to date with what's new. We have mobile apps too, so head on over to the App Store, be it an Android or an iOS App Store. Just search D-A-B-C-C, download the app, and you can listen to it on the go anywhere, anyplace, anytime wonderful stuff there. So again, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for listening to the ABCC Radio. Can you say D-A-B-C-C? D-A-B-C. Say it again, D-A-B-C-C. D-A-B-C. Can you say it again? D-A-B-C-C. D-A-B-B-C. How about D-A-B-C-C? D-A-B-B-C. D-A-B-C-C. 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 D-A-B-C-C.